Welcome everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrummy Quick Designs and today I'm going to share a tutorial on how to use the print and cut feature in Design Space. I get asked a lot of questions about that. I have a lot of new people in my Let's Learn Cricut Design Space Facebook group and you guys are wanting to know how do you use this? You hear us talk about it. What's print and cut? What does that mean? So I'm going to show you. Let me pop over into Design Space and here you're going to see some images that I'm going to be talking about. So this is about Let's Learn Print and Cut Layered Images. So we will be starting with a layered image that I got out of Design Space. And that layered image is in a lot of different pieces. So as you can see here over in your layers panel, you can always see your layers over here to the right. And then it lets you know what the feature is for that particular image. So this, the, each of these will cut out. So you'll cut it out of cardstock or pattern paper or whatever you want to cut it out. So, and I will be showing you how to assemble layered images. That's another question I get asked a lot. So we're going to be talking about a layered image, what that means. So I'll show you what that looks like. Then I'm going to show you how can you take that layered image and then use the flatten feature in Design Space to make it one solid piece that you would actually use your printer to print out and then cut it with your Cricut. And then we're going to talk about printing patterns from Design Space onto different shapes of your image. And that's a really fun feature. Then I'm going to show you how would you, once you do that, how would you flatten the whole thing to be able to do it as a print pattern. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover today. Now, I know some of y'all were asking about making like invitations using the print and cut feature or stickers or anything like that. I'm going to cover those in future tutorials, so stay tuned for those. But today we're talking about layered images. So I'm going to start with this layered image that I got out of Design Space. It's a cute little bird. And I want to show you that particular image comes in and you're going to see it on your screen like this. But as you start looking at the pieces, you can see there's a lot of little pieces here, right? You know, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different layers on this one image. So each of these would cut out separately using cardstock. I'm going to show you how you layer the images, how do you glue them together. And um, taking the images apart, like I did here, was I just slid each image under underneath I ungrouped this image and then I moved each piece over so if you ever need to figure out what order do your layers go in you can do the same thing just ungroup it and then just kind of slide each piece apart and you'll see they're kind of stacked on top of each other so that's one tip for you but let's say you want to use that same cute little image but you don't want to have to cut all those little pieces out and you don't want to have to assemble them. That's when print and cut comes in handy. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this image and show you what I did here to make it. There's the layered image, but I'm going to show you how I flattened it to make it just one layer. Okay, so here's the image and then I'm going to come over here to the layers panel and click the flatten button. And voila, that's how easy it is. So what's going to happen is this is going to go, when we go to hit make it here in a minute, it's actually going to go to its own little mat in Design Space, the virtual mat, and it's going to be a print and cut file. So that means you have to have a white piece of cardstock and you're going to put it in your printer and we're going to send it to the printer and your color printer is going to cut, is going to print out the shapes that we designate as print and cut. And then it's going to, you put it back in your Cricut machine and then you cut it out. You It'll cut out just the outline of it. Okay. So I'll show you those steps as well. But that's how easy it is just to take a layered image, highlight it, hit the flatten button, and there you go. When you look back over here in your layers panel, now it's been flattened and it's just going to say cut and print or print and cut is what we call it. So it's going to print it out and then it's going to cut it. All right. So that is just how easy it is to take a layered image and just flatten it out so that it'll print all at one, just on one layer. I'm going to make another copy of this and I'm going to bring it over here. All right. So now we're going to talk about print 
patterns with layers, okay? So here's our little layered image, and we can tell that because it's got all the different layers here, and right now it's all cut images, all right? But let's say that I wanted to turn, uh, let's see, the white, I wanted it to be a dark yellow instead. I can hit cut here next to it. It's going to highlight that. And up here in your top menu, you have line type and fill. And this is important when you're working with print and cut because I can change the color. Let's say I wanted the color to be the darker gold color. Okay, see how it changed it from the cream to that. And then I can come over here. Let me highlight it again. And I can then change the background and I can change the background uh, of the the pom-poms rather to this color okay like a lighter yellow so you can play with the colors to see what your image is going to look like in those colors and they will still stay as cut images all right now how do you get it to be a pattern so I'm gonna pick this one here that says cut and it is the little background of the cap and see how I did it in this one it's got the polka dots on it it is so easy to change it to polka dots now I'm going to come up here to fill where it says fill and I'm going to hit that and you're going to get an option no fill or print I'm going to change it to print okay now you're going to notice here in your layers panel it changed it this one piece is now a print and cut piece okay so if we hit the button and we're going to make this it would cut it would just do a print and cut for that one piece okay so that's how you can tell is because it'll say print and cut next to each image you've done that to all right that confuses everybody but this is the best way for you to see did i make the whole thing a print and cut or only pieces of it a print and cut all right now the other thing I want to do is I want to change that into a pattern instead of it being a solid color so how do you do that so I'm going to click on the print right and then I'm going to hit the color bar next to it now it says color and I can change it into different colors and it'll and it'll change it to you know it'll still be print and cut let me make it a color you guys can see so see how it changed it to this and it would still be a print and cut but I can then hit this little down arrow and change it to a pattern. So we're going to go to pattern and it'll, it'll take a second for it to load any patterns up. Once it loads the patterns up, the design space has already some patterns that are available for you to use for free, or you can upload your own patterns. And I'm going to cover that in a different video. Today, we're just talking about how to use it. Um, if they're already in there. So we've got patterns. We can scroll through. There's a bunch of patterns. Now I have some patterns that I've uploaded. So yours may not look exactly like mine right now, but you'll have some patterns in your Design Space account to use. So I've got that one piece highlighted and I want it to be this little pink polka dot one. So I'm going to hit that. Really easy. I just clicked on it. It'll take a second but now it's going to change, change that background of the hat to the pink polka dot. Once it's made that change, it'll take just a second. And now you see it's changed it to the pink polka dot. And when you look up here, the pink polka dot part is the only one that's going to be print and cut. And I can then go in and I can change it so that the lighter yellow is a print and cut. So I can pick that and come over here to fill. And I can change it to print. So now I've got two pieces that are going to be print and cut and the rest of it's going to be cut file. So all the other pieces would cut out. This is the other thing you can do. So we're going to go ahead and ungroup this. I'm going to pull each piece off and move it out of the way because I have decided I don't really like this layer, this top layer here with those cutouts on it. Okay, see how See how it's got, it's kind of like the highlights for that particular image. And I don't really care for that. I'm going to take that off. So don't ever be afraid if you've got multiple layers. Some of those layers may not be something that you want to keep. And you can certainly just change that. Okay. Now the other thing you could do with this layer, let's say you did need it, but you didn't want this little highlight that's on here. That's what this is called. This little highlight on here and see when we flattened it it kind of made that part lighter 
If you don't want that on there, you can do two things. One, you can just take out that whole layer if you don't need it. Or if for some reason you did need it, you can use the contour feature over here in the layers panel down here on the bottom right. I'm going to hit contour and I can go in and I can just click on this and take that part out. Okay, so now I have just a solid cut here and it took out the layer part. Okay, so that was easy. So you can always play with contour. But now I've got my little bird and I'm going to put his hat back on him. So I want to group this back. I've got two pieces that are going to cut out as print then cut. All right, want to point that out. And I'm just going to group the whole thing back. The rest of it I'm going to cut out of cardstock. And then I'm going to take that same image and I'm going to duplicate it. And now that I have it highlighted, I'm going to turn this into a print then cut the whole thing. I don't want it in different pieces. I want it in one piece. So I'm going to have it highlighted, but go back over to my layers panel and click flatten. And now this whole piece is now when you look in your layers panel, this whole piece is now a print and cut. Okay. So it's not the individual pieces. It's only going to cut, it's going to print out the whole thing and then it's going to cut around the edge for us. So those are some things you can do that I wanted to show you what you can do with the layered images. Now we're going to send this to the, uh, my printer to go ahead and get it printed out. And, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how that works and we're going to cut it out. And then I'm going to show you how do you do the layering and what the difference of this looks like between a layered image and when you do it as a print and cut image. So you can visually understand what we're doing here. The other thing that I want to show you is we're going to actually send this to the printer. So I want to explain how you can get the best and thin cut results. So we're going to hit make it. And what's going to happen is your print thin cut image is going to be, it's always going to be your first one. If you have any print thin cut, it's always going to be your first one on your virtual mat. After you hit make it, it's going to come up and you're going to have this black box around it. That is the registration marks that your scanner on your Cricut Explorer or Cricut Maker is going to go through and read to, so it knows where to go cut your image. Okay, so it's going to be communicating back to your um, device uh, that you're using, whether it's a PC or a laptop or your mobile device. Um, your scanner is going to go through and I'll show you that process here in a minute. We're, we've just got one print and cut. So we're going to have the two birds that I showed you that are print and cut. And we're going to have those two pieces of the hat that we're going to be print and cut. So we're going to click continue. Now you're going to come up to a screen in design space here that is going to tell you to send it to your printer. We're going to say send to printer and then you're going to get this print preview screen. Now once you get to the print preview screen, it is going to then allow you to pick your printer. So I always have mine defaulted to the printer here in my craft studio, but you may have different printers around your house and you, your color printer may not be next to you. So you can click the down arrow and go find whichever printer it is that you want to send it to. The other thing is you could make multiple copies here. So if I wanted two of this, I could change it to two copies. I'm going to leave mine on one for right now. And then you have add bleed. All right, so bleed is, I get this question all the time, bleed is when it flushes a little bit of extra ink around the edges of your image so that when your blade cuts it, you get a true color-to-color uh, -color edge on your cutout piece, okay? If you didn't, if you didn't, if you turn bleed off, what ends up happening is that sometimes you end up with a little bit of white around the outside edge of on some of your cuts okay it's not the best look so you always want to make sure the bleed is on then the next thing you want to do is the thing that I think trips people up the most is this it says use system dialog this is the system dialog for your particular printer so I'm going to turn this on we're going to hit print and what's going to happen is my system dialog for my printer is going to pop up here in a minute. Now yours may look completely different than mine. It depends upon what your printer looks like. See, here's my system printer dialog box. Yours may look different, but what you can do is you can go into your preferences for your printer. This is not for design space. This is for your printer. See, it's got my printer selected here. I'm going to hit preferences and then it's going to pop up this screen. Now yours may pop up at layout or paper quality or printing shortcuts or whatever. 
Um, so you may have to look at your tabs across the top, but what you're looking for is your paper type, which I'm just printing on plain white cardstock, which is what's recommended, and then print quality. Everybody's printer is typically set at a default of normal. When you do print and cut with normal quality, sometimes you get these lines in your print that your printed project and you're like, where did this come from? Do I need to clean my printer? Do I need to do this? It's not generally your printer per se that you're, you need to clean the heads on your printer or anything. It is that the quality level that you have it set on. So I'm going to click the down arrow here and on mine, it says best quality. Okay, so that actually just flushes a little more ink onto my printed object and it's going to give me a nice, beautiful uh, color consistent across the whole image. I'm not going to have these little lines on it as if I left it on the normal setting. So I see a lot of people asking about this and this is where you do this. Once you change it to best setting, yours may say something else. You may, your printer may call it something else, but you want it on the top quality for printing. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to send it to the printer. Now I'm using a white cardstock that is from, I think I bought it at Walmart. It's an eight and a half by 11 uh, pack of white cardstock. I'll link it up in the description of the video if y'all are interested in it because I find I get really great results using this particular cardstock. Now if you have a Cricut Explore series of machines, you have to use white cardstock. You don't have any other option because enter on those machines, it's easier for it to read when it's on white. If you use a different color, you're going to have run into some problems. Plus your printed color is going to look much brighter and better if you just use white paper. If you have a Cricut Maker machine, the Cricut Maker has a completely different scan head in it and you can get away with using some other light colors to do print and cut on. So I want to go ahead and change it to medium cardstock here because that's what it's going to cut out on. And now we're going to switch over. I'm going to show you what this looks like, how you put it on the mat, and the magic of the print and cut where it, we printed it and now we're going to cut it. Okay, so this is the printed piece that I sent from my design space to my color printer. I use an HP NV inkjet printer. Uh, there's a lot of different brands. You can use the one that you prefer. I use the HP NV because I get the instant ink program so it's less expensive and it tells the it sends it to HP and says hey Debbie's about to run out of ink so can you send her some and it does so <laughs> I never run out of ink I can do as much print and cut as I want so this is the banded box that goes around okay that I talked about and this is the registration mark that it's going to read with your Cricut Explorer or Cricut Maker machine all right so you want to make sure that that looks good on your printed piece also you'll notice you'll see some of the bleed that I was talking about around the edges here that is what you want because now it's going to cut it's going to cut just inside that bleed area so you get a really pretty uh, side to side print uh, color. Okay, so this is on just white cardstock, and I told you guys I'd link it up the one that I use. I just get it at Walmart, it's super cheap for a whole ream of it, and I find it to be a good quality and it works great for print and cut. And the other thing is, you could actually do this on like I use those full sticker sheet labels that you can pick up at the office supply store, or I buy mine on Amazon. And you could do, you could make your own stickers if you use sticker paper. So it's the same process that I just showed you, but then you could use it to do print and cut on, to make your own stickers for planner books or kids parties or whatever you want to make stickers for, labels, that kind of thing. So once you get this ready, then you want to put it on your mat. So you always want to make sure that you put it in the upper left corner. Now I just use a light grip blue mat with my regular cardstock. And then you want to press it down okay so you always want to start it up here because you're this you the scanner needs to be able to find it so we're going to put it in our machine now i'm using a cricut maker machine at the moment but this is the same process you use if you're using a cricut explorer you'll get your little flashing light here for your arrow to speed it through once it's ready it'll give you the flashing cricut head and you'll press that it'll take a second it's still communicating this is the part where it's going to scan. 
and it's a little noisy on camera. Anyway, so you'll see that there's a light right here where my finger's pointed. That's your scanner head, okay? Now, you're, you have one on the Cricut Explore machines and on the Cricut Maker machines, and what it's doing is it's going to go across in several different spots on your print and cut image, and it's scanning. That's how it tells it where it's re reading the registration marks, basically. Okay, and then it's going to stop for a second after it's done that. It's going to come back over. And then it's going to go through and it's going to start cutting out each of your images. Okay, it is cutting just the outside of your image. So it'll take a minute or two for it to go through and cut it all. And then I'll show you what that's going to look like when you go to take it off your mat. I've got a tip for that as well. Once it's through doing the cut, then you're just going to unload your mat. I'm going to move my Cricut out of the way. So my tip for you here is you're going to see that it's cut around, okay? And then I want you to flip your mat over and you're going to you're going to peel the mat away from the paper instead of peeling the paper away from the mat. This keeps your cuts from being from rolling up on you or kind of uh, bending. You can either use your finger or your scraper spatula or whatever to help you if you need some help peeling that off and then once you do this look how nice that cut it out so you can see here where it that where that bleed was you can still see the color so it cut within that so that now we have beautiful print and cut images and these are the two pattern pieces that we made Okay, using the pattern in Design Space. Now, what I wanted to show you was changing that the print quality makes a big difference because this particular image, and it may be hard for y'all to see on camera, but there's some little lines that are running across it. This is when I left it on normal quality. I did not change it. But when I changed it to best quality, I don't see those little lines on my print and cut image. Okay, so it does make a difference. Make sure you change that print quality before you send your project over to your printer. So now I want to show you the different images that you just watched me make in Design Space and how you actually layer an image because I know that's one question you have and then show you what we did with the printed making our own uh, patterns. So the first thing when you're going to layer an image is you always start with the back layer. So this is the complete, the first cut that I showed you that's just the layered image. Okay, so there are multiple pieces to this. And we're going to start with the back layer. And so you're going to put one layer on top of the other. Now I'm just using a chisel point glue pen. These are what I recommend when you're doing uh, layering like this. It's a zig two-way chisel point or this is actually a close to my heart bonding memories. It's the same thing. Um, and then I just add some glue on the back. It doesn't take very, it doesn't take a whole lot. And then you pick up the back layer and you put on the top layer. And I'm just going to line up around so that all the edges match. Okay, so you're just going to do that with each one, each layer. Now, some of the images in Design Space may have little cut lines on it that shows you where the pieces go. Most of the newer images don't do that, but it's pretty easy. You just want to pick, like I'll start at the top of his head here, or the top part of the body, and then I'll know this piece will fall in place here. Okay, so as you start layering, you start seeing the project come to life, so to speak. And when you have like little cutouts like these eyes on here, if you guys can see that, I make sure I put some glue around that just so it stays flat when I lay it on. Okay, so there's that layer. I'm showing you this whole process because so many of you are new and you're not quite sure once you cut all these layers out what you do. And remember, you can always refer to the picture of the design in Design Space if you're having trouble with it. Okay, so we've got this far on our little bird. Now, we need to add his um, nose. Now, the nose is also in two p or his beak, rather, not his nose. It's also in two pieces. 
Okay, so there's a top layer to that. This is where I find having my tweezers helps a lot with this. So I can hold it with my tweezers and then use my glue pen to put glue on it and then lay it on the back layer. Press that down and then I can pick the whole piece up and put glue on it to apply it to the project. Okay, so it's just going to go right here. Alright, and then there's two cheeks for this bird. Remember this was like 13 different layers, so it does take a minute or two to put the layers together. Now we have the hat, okay? So this is the part that we did the, the pattern on, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But you have a back layer, then you have a top layer, and then you have the uppermost top layer. So this piece actually has three pieces to it. So we're going to glue on, again, starting with the back piece. You're just going to lay it on and match up your edges again okay like so and then you're going to put your top piece on and this is the cap that goes on the bird up here okay now that I've assembled that then I can glue it onto my layer and then we have the branch so there's a couple of these little snow pieces that go on the branch and they're going to go like this on here. Okay, so once you get the branch, now this is the final piece. Those little feet go on the branch. So we're just going to add some glue right here. And press that down. Let it stick. But this is what you end up with, is this adorable little piece. But look how thick this is. So it's multiple layers put together. All right. Now we took that same image in Design Space and I showed you how to take that image and flatten it. When you flatten it, it prints out on your printer and it's white cardstock on the back, right? But it's color on the front. It's adorable as well. Okay. They're both super cute. Um, this one takes a little bit longer because it's longer to cut out and it's longer to put it together. And this one you kind of get instant gratification, but it is still a flat piece. Okay, so that is the difference between a layered image and a flattened print and cut image. The next image that we talked about was using making our own printed paper, really a cut that we use the patterns and design space to do this. So instead of these being pattern cardstock or cardstock that you cut out, these were the two pieces that we see it's white on the back because we printed these, okay? So you can also use this as a technique to add pattern to your cut images if you want. Now we could have, you know, made any of these layers printed I just picked the hat because it looked cute to do it that way and then here's our top layer just like I showed you earlier on that other one I had already put this one together or the layers together for you so we don't have to go through that process again but we can just add our little pattern piece here here's the layer image but with the pattern um, paper that we printed okay from design space added to a layered piece this is just the print and cut image both super cute. It's really just a matter of preference. But there again, this is, you know, pretty thick. Depends upon what you want it to look like. But that is how do you do print and cut? How do you, um, you use it in a couple of different ways here on layered images? So I hope you had a lot of fun learning about Cricut's print and cut on using layered images. I have more tutorials coming out for you about using it print and cut with making your own like invitations and stickers and things like that. I love print and cut. It's a lot of fun. It's easy to use once you see how quick and easy it can be. And I hope you picked up some tips on layering images. I know some of you have really been asking about that too. So hopefully this video tutorial helped answer that. Come join us in the Let's Learn Cricut Design Space Facebook group. Be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I release new videos every week. I don't want you to miss out. Thanks so much and happy crafting!